Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to do an oft requested topic. We're going to talk all about fluorescent paints, how to use them, what they're good at, and most importantly what they're bad at. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V style. Now I love bright poppy colors. There are many fluorescent paints on the market and I think a lot of times when you first look at these paints or think about getting these paints, you're sort of after the gimmick aspect of I want to make my miniature glow in the dark. Now, yes, some of these paints do glow in the dark, but I'm just going to go ahead and ignore that because actually that's just kind of silly and doesn't really do anything. Like it's a funny, neat effect, but it's not really what we care about when we're painting. Now, despite that, these things have an incredibly wide array of uses and frequently show up in my paint schemes. However, they are a very, very tricky paint to use. So let's begin by just talking about what's out there. There are a lot of different both fluorescent paints and pigments you can purchase. Here you can see a lot of them laid out. And as I said, there's things like Golden and War Colors and Scale 75, Vallejo makes some, AK makes some, and on and on and on. There are a bunch of these. Not all of these paints are equal. Some of them uh, are pretty good at what they do. Some of them are not. Let's start with the colors. Now, you're going to see five sort of main colors when it comes to fluorescence. Pink, orange, yellow, or some kind of chartreuse, green, and blue. Now that blue, we can go ahead and take that and just get that right out of here. That is useless. Pink fluorescent paint is great. Good for magical effects sort of if you've got pop magenta lights or that kind of thing, or an undershade of magenta, awesome. Uh, orange, great for fire effects, all sorts of things like that. Uh, yellow, good for just general brightening up, or if you want a really intense light source, if you want something that's actually giving off like yellow light. And green, that's good for your sort of warp stone or poison or anything like that. Any kind of toxic effect is really good. Those four colors are really the fluorescents that you can work in. Fluorescent blues aren't really fluorescent or even that bright a blue. They're just kind of awful. So let's just throw those away. The next thing you're going to notice when it comes to fluorescent paints is that they have wildly different consistencies. Uh, here I have three fluorescent paints on my palette, uh, one from Golden, one from War Colors, and one from AK Interactive Third Generations line. Now you'll notice there is some slight tonal variation in the three of these, but all three of these are really pretty poppy fluorescent pinks. The Golden is very liquidy. The War Colors is very gummy. The uh, AK is somewhere in the middle, more like a traditional miniature paint. What's true about all fluorescent paints though, is that they are super translucent and their coverage sucks. If you've ever tried to paint with fluorescence and just said, I don't get it, these don't work at all, how do you apply this paint? Well, don't worry, we're gonna help you out. Let's take a look at three different Skaven. These three Skaven are in sort of different states of priming. One is just black, one has a weak zenithal and one has a reinforced zenithal. So that is to say, I've gone in and put paint over the top of the zenithal, either through dry brush or layering or, you know, a value sketch, it doesn't matter. We got it to more of a pure white. When I apply that pink over the black, it looks like crap, it doesn't cover anything, you know, it's just, it's doing nothing. And it doesn't matter if I use the high flow golden, or if I use the much thicker war colors, it's just not doing anything. Now, if I go to the gray paint, uh, sorry, the, the sort of midway step, the basic light zenithal, here I have some effect, but it's still quite weak. And again, regardless of which paint I use, whether the golden 
or the much thicker war colors, you're just getting an incredibly translucent, spotty, uneven effect. Now let's go to the white. So this is the fully popped, uh, fully popped Zenithal with the extra layers, the sort of full value sketch where we go all the way up to white. Here, finally, we see the fluorescent paint shine. In this situation, it really pops and that pink explodes off the miniature, creating a much more vibrant effect, really showing its true color and creating something that pops and basically nearly blows out the, the lens on my camera so it's looking almost overtly bright. That's exactly the first key. When you're using fluorescence, it's gotta go over something bright. It's got to go over white or something near white. You can use off-color pastels, ivories, things like that. But do keep in mind, and you can use this to your advantage, that your, the temperature of your undershade will also affect the fluorescence since it is so translucent. If you use something like a glacier blue, then your fluorescent pink will feel much more cold. If you use something like an ice yellow or a, a very warm ivory, it's going to feel much more warm. That temperature will absolutely shine through to the surface layer. Now, of course, fluorescents aren't just good for, uh, you know, making an entire miniature pink. Uh, there's probably not much call in the world for hot pink Skaven, though I think there should be. Even in our normal miniature painting, we can integrate fluorescence to really bring a lot of pop and visual interest and color and tonal variation into our models. So here we have a little goblin. His skin is just base coated green. I'm going to start by just applying effectively an ivory over the top of that where I want the highlights to be. I start with a thin layer that's going to be somewhat translucent and kind of cover those areas, the fingers, the knuckles, the top of the arm, and so forth. And then going back to the paint, I go ahead and grab uh, a little thicker version or a little less, you know, more of like a layer version, and I put that over those areas I want really poppy. So now we have a basically a transition from green to sort of white to really white or really ivory. Now when I run the fluorescent green over that, what I get is this really beautiful highlight. It acts like a glaze. Because fluorescents are naturally so translucent, they're effectively glazes out of the bottle. So there's no need to do extra work to thin them down, though you can, as we'll see in just a moment. But because they're acting like a glaze, they're both hiding the transition in between the various layers, and also then reacting with that undershade in really interesting ways, where all of a sudden I'm getting some really nice tonal progression in that space. I can also take the fluorescence and mix it with the base tone, and it's a great way to just get some poppy high up or higher step colors or midtones to transition between the two. So I, in other words, I can take that original deep green plus the fluorescent green, work them into a 50-50 mix and smooth that transition even more. Again, because the fluorescent is so translucent, it will naturally make a thin layer, a thin glaze. It'll be much easier to work with for you to create those transition covers if you have problems or challenges thinning paints. And at the same time, it's really making your model pop. Now, of course, fluorescence can also be used for more traditional purposes. Uh, for so our example, fluorescent orange, I used here in uh, our vampire friend's cape to show the reflective fire. Uh, so certainly that is a great use if you really want to catch like a, a fire effect, a flaming sword, working just a little bit of it in. It shouldn't be the whole effect but just to show those really bright edges or that area of extreme glow, of extreme OSL, that can make it really pop. So for things like OSL, magical effects, anything like that, fluorescent paints can really be your best friend. In each case, the key here is it needs to go over a bright undertone, like something like white, and it needs to be used sparingly. The less is more effect is very, very much the rule of the day. Now, it wouldn't be a hobby cheating video if I didn't leave you with one cool bonus trick. And that is using fluorescence as an undershade themselves. So let's go back to our Skaven. I started by laying down the white, 
I put the fluorescent pink over the top, and it popped. There we go, we've got a nice, bright, extreme pink. But let's actually integrate some red. So here I have Golden's Bold Pyrrole Red, and I'm just gonna put it over sort of the gray part of the miniature. You can see what we get is a pretty flat, pretty boring red. And that's because we know red, much like the fluorescent colors itself, needs to go over brighter colors. When you're putting red over grays like this, you just get something that's fairly washed out. Red, like the fluorescence, is quite translucent. If we look at the front of the miniature, here I've done the value sketch. If I put the red over top, I can get a pretty decent red. It's not bad, and a couple of applications of it will give me something that's pretty bright, pretty good, like a nice, bright, pretty intense red. But, if I put that red over the fluorescent pink, some of that fluorescent power is going to come through that highly translucent red. And when it does so, it's really going to make it explode and make it feel much more vibrant. So if you have a challenge with your reds feeling kind of dead, kind of lifeless, using something like a fluorescent pink underneath can actually make the red be much more explosive, much more intense in the color it resolves. You can do the same trick with other translucent colors. So translucent yellow, or sorry, uh, fluorescent yellows under your yellow tones, uh, translu or fluorescent oranges under your translucent orange, and so on and so forth. Using it specifically in the highlight areas normally, uh, where you want that color to be super, super duper intense and reflect that highlight in a really punchy way, that's where you want to use it. So again, you're not base coating the miniature in the fluorescent, less is still more, but you're using it to really pop those intense areas of color out where you want to show that it's really vibrant. So there you go. That's fluorescent paints. I do hope that gave you some good ideas for how to use these. Uh, this has been something people have requested a lot. I hope this helps you out. If you're watching this, hey, give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got questions about fluorescent paints or frankly anything I didn't answer, drop those down in the comments below. I always answer every question asked. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do so through the Patreon link down below. The Patreon is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, as always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.